Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so when you're in the unit of kinetics and you have rate law problems, here are some practice problems that you might come across that are a little bit more difficult. Um, so if you have, want to just talk about the general rate laws, you might want to look at the, the um, actual videos that we have filmed before this. So here's one practice problem that I want to talk about that uh, talks about the concepts within this. Okay, so let's consider a solution where we have 0.1 molar of H plus ions and a 0.1 molar solution of uh, thio thioacetamide at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've, we've determined that the rate law looks like this. It's a two, second order rate, uh, second order reaction, and they're both in the first order. Okay, um, does, we're going to ask, each, at each question we're going to ask, does the rate increase, decrease, or remain the same? And does K, our rate constant, increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, so let's say we want add water to the solution. How, does that, how is that going to affect the rate? Well, it's not going to affect K at all. K is never going to change except in one scenario, and that's when temperature changes. So, so the rate law constant is actually going to be the same. It's not going to be affected. But what will be affected is the rate. And why would the rate be affected? Because we're diluting these guys. We're lowering the concentration. When we add water, we're lowering the concentration of uh, the th thioacetamide and the hydrogen ion. So the rate is actually going to be slower, which makes sense because according to our collision theory, um, the concentration plays a major part in how fast the reaction goes. Number two, the reaction is heated to 75 degrees Celsius. Well, we're adding heat to this, to this reaction, so it should proceed faster. Um, but if you notice, and so the, rate, the reaction, um, the rate does increase in this case, if we increase temperature. But how, does that, how is that shown here? Well, K is temperature dependent. So even though concentrations remain the same, K will change within temp when temperature increases. So um, yes, K will increase as well. So only time K will change. What if we add sodium hydroxide to this solution? Well, why would that make a difference? Because nothing in here is sodium hydroxide. It may dilute the system, um, but the concentrations just are still actually going to be quite similar. So th the main thing that it's actually going to affect is actually sodium hydroxide is going to have a reaction. Um, the reaction, it will, the, since it's a base, it will react with this um, acid. And so this will go down, which will decrease the rate of reaction. So if this concentration is going to go down, this will remain the same. The rate is going to lower as well. So, um, but K will not change at all because, again, K is only going to change when temperature changes. Okay, so that's one type of problem that you might see. Another type of problem that you might see are dealing with um, this type of finding the actual rate law um, using data. And we've talked about that in, actual, in the rate law, in the, when we're dealing with rate laws, and I talked to you about rate laws. But let's talk about how um, this, this problem might be a slight bit different. So you're supposed to figure out <clears throat> um, the rate when comparing two different trials. So let's look at trial B, because these two are the same, and we're going to look at how A is affected. So um, we're going to say, OK, the concentration of A in the second one is 8. The concentration of A in the first one is 2. <clears throat> and how is that going to affect my uh, superscript? Because don't forget, the, rate, the backbone of the rate law is going to be rate equals K, our rate constant, times the concentration of A to some certain power to the concentration of B to some certain power. And don't forget, these coefficients that you have in this reaction are not going to necessarily be the coefficients or the, the um, powers in your rate law. So that's actually, we're at, so we're right now we're trying to find the, the powers. So as A changes, what's going to happen to rate? Rate goes from, it goes 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2. Um, and the rate for the first one is 2.5 times 10 to the negative third. And so I find this to be 4 to the m equals um, 8. No, I'm sorry. Let's actually figure this out. 4, look at me. Divided by 16. Okay. So what 4 to the what power is going to equal 16? Well, we know 4 squared is equal 16, so m is going to equal 2. So, all right, so I'm going to change this to 2. Fantastic. So now I need to do B. Well, uh, B is changed. There's no time when A is constant. So this is actually what makes it more difficult. There's no time when A is constant, but B, there is a time when um, B is changing. So what do we do now if A is, if we can't compare? Well, we already know the superscript, or we already know the order of A, so we can use that to figure out the order of B. So let's go over here and say, okay, I know that, um, let's, let's compare, 2 and 3. 
So we're going to say, okay, 16.0 over 8. This is a new problem. And this is going to be, we know this is squared because we solved it already, times um, one, sorry, 3.0 over 1.5 to the n, because we don't know that, is going to equal um, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 1 over 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, so this 16 over 8 um, is 2. 2 squared is 4 times 3 over 1.5 is 2 to the nth power, we don't know, equals this. And let's, let's divide that to make sure we have a, the right answer. 3.2, second negative 1, divided by 4.0, second e, negative 2. This equals 8. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. 2 to the n equals 8 over 4, which is 2, so n is going to equal 1. So now I can change this to 1. So that is how you figure out, find the rate law. Um, if something, if one of your, um, in your trials, one of your uh, reactants is not changing, that might be something you might get in a more advanced class, like an honors class or something. And this is how you go about doing it. So now we have our rate law. Um, and I would typically have to find our k value. I'm not going to sit there and find our k value. Oh, it's a plug and chug problem. Um, but if you are to find, we might need to find the units for k. And the units for k are fairly easy, because if you remember, k is equal to the units for k, I'm going to write units, is equal to 1 over the molarity times the order of the reaction minus 1 times the unit of time, and in this case it's seconds, so it's times seconds. So the unit for k in this case is k equals 1 over m. The order in this case is third order, 2 plus 1 is 3. So the order minus 1 is 2 times seconds. This is a unit for this case. OK, so the next question might say, um, if we have, wh which one is the correct mechanism? So the mechanism, because, just because this follows the rate law, actually, the mechanism, the slow step in the mechanism actually has to be the one that follows the rate law, meaning that there has to be a 2 in front of the A and a 1 in front of the B in the slow step of the mechanism, in the rate determining step. Um, and if you want to learn more about mechanisms, actually there's a video on mechanisms describing everything about them that you'd want to know. So here, which one is the correct mechanism? So here's a slow step. The slow step is a rate determining step. Um, we would say from here, we would say our rate is equal to k times a y. Because our slow step tells us that. However, we can't have y in our, in our rate law. Y cannot be in our rate law because it's not in our reaction. So we have to look for where Y was formed. Y was formed over here. So um, we can, we're going to substitute Y for B because Y was made with just B. So I can substitute Y for B and say the rate, in the, if this were the mechanism, this would be the rate. However, we said the rate was this using our, rate, using our um, data. So this, is, this cannot be right. So it must be this one, but let's prove it. Rate, in this case, this is a slow step. So we're going to say, OK, rate equals k times a times y. Again, y is in, our, uh, is in our rate law. I can't have y in our rate law because it's not in our reaction. So I'm going to take y. y was formed here. And it, it's, I'm going ch to change it to a times b. So then I can say, OK, I'm going to re rewrite this to say k equals a squared b equals rate. And does this match our rate law? K equals a, uh, rate equals k a squared b. Yes, this is right. So this must be the correct mechanism. So these are the more difficult problems that you're going to come across when dealing with uh, the kinetics and rate laws. So just use what you, uh, the information that you know. And, actually try, and mathematically, you can actually always figure something out. So uh, rate laws can be pretty difficult. And that we didn't go, there's actually even more integrated rate laws and things like that, half-life, activation energy, that you might deal with in AP chemistry. So, um, but this is just your basic honors rate law problems. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be less than. Yeah. Dang.
Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 